First I made 5 brutes, then a mega boss, then 6 more mega bosses, and now the final piece, the culmination of my stormcast armored iron jaws, a maw crusher. Funnily enough though, I actually didn't really want to start on this project. Mostly because the Maw Crusher is a very expensive kit, and I wasn't really sure how I could make it that much different than a normal one, really bring any kind of Stormcast flair to him. But he was the last missing piece of my warband, so I decided to give it a shot. What you see here are the armor plates from the Star Drake kit. They're the largest Stormcast armor plates I could find, even if they were actually pretty expensive to get. A few of them fit the Maw Crusher pretty well right out of the package, as you can see here with this flank one. Though to get it to lie flat, I did have to cut off all these really nice spikes that the Maw Crusher originally comes with. This is often kind of an annoying thing about making conversions, is that you have to get rid of all these really nice details to add on other aesthetic details to make sure your conversion looks distinct from the original. In its fist walking stance, the belly and chest of the Maw Crusher really aren't at all visible. Still, I thought I could add some Stormcast flavor by layering on the chest plate from the original Star Drake, so that at least the upper portions would suggest that there was more armor there than the viewer could necessarily see. Because I didn't think the chest itself would actually be at all visible, I didn't worry about making them fit into a cohesive hole, really only taking care that they looked good from the top. But at this point I had an idea for the build and how to change his stance that I thought would look really dynamic and cool. The first step to changing his stance was to saw his arm in two at the elbow. Second was to snip his neck off at the collarbone. Like most GW large models, the Maw Crusher is hollow, which is usually fine, it keeps down the weight, but I knew I would need new connection points if I wanted to reposition his limbs. So what I did is I took this insulation foam, which is pretty cheap, and I sliced it into smaller bits so I could fit it into his main body cavities. Usually I would just crumple foil to do this, but this is a big model and I wanted to keep the weight down as much as possible. I did this not just for his main body cavity, but also for his limbs. Over the foam, I layered Procreate. This is so that it would connect well. Super glue really doesn't work well with insulation foam, and the Procreate sticks to the insulation foam pretty well, so it forms a nice middle layer. And I reconnected both legs at the hip using this method. Specifically, I reconnected them so he's in a more upright position. Off screen, I glued his neck to his head so that it formed one unit I could reposition. The basic idea for this stance was that I wanted him rearing upward, looking down at his next enemy, kind of like a lizard King Kong. Reconnecting the legs had left massive gaps in his thighs and crotchal area, so I used green stuff to fill them in. Using green stuff for legs always has the problem that it makes my models look like superheroes with super green pants and I hate it, but it's important to keep your eye on the end game, and once painted it would look significantly better. I won't show it every time, but throughout this build, I repositioned his stance several times. This original one is a little too upright, though it doesn't look like it right now. It makes him look more like some kind of super chonky demon than a knuckle-walking lizard rearing on his hind legs. You can also see here that I rearranged his chest plate so that it forms one cohesive whole, essentially just layering a bunch of the armor plates from the Star Drake. Speaking of the Star Drake, to get those armor plates, I had to get the whole body of it from a bit site. And if I was already going a King Kong route, why not have my Maw Crusher standing over the corpse of Star Drake he's just slaughtered, like one of the many T-Rexes King Kong has vanquished throughout his films. The Star Drake is to begin with in a super weird pose that, when you put him on his side, kind of looks like he's lying down. My plan was to rest my Maw Crusher's arms on the Star Drake's body like he was holding him down or resting them on there after he had died. Though I bounced back and forth between working on the Maw Crusher and the Star Drake body, I'm going to break it into two sections just for ease. First, how I made the Star Drake look very, very dead. While one side of the Star Drake already looked like he was lying down, the other side didn't, so I had to reposition his other legs to look like they were conforming to gravity. The position of his neck out of the box also looks like it's kind of lying down on the ground, sort of like he's doing that mouth open, tongue out, dead thing. The only problem was that his horns got in the way of him lying flat. So I just snipped them off. Let's pretend they got cut off in the battle with the Maw Crusher. I took one half of his chest plate and snipped some lines in it. I then bent those portions out. I wanted to give the impression that the Maw Crusher had literally ripped his breastplate open in the battle, but this idea didn't work. I tried several iterations of it throughout the build and you'll see what I eventually landed on, but this first one especially looked kinda goofy. Between these steps, I filled most of the Star Drake's body with insulation foam and crumpled foil. 
I'd left the section for his belly open though until this point. That's because I wanted to show some really significant damage to the Star Drake, as though the Maw Crusher had literally ripped his stomach open. The Maw Crusher and the Star Drake are both titans, and nothing but the most brutal, savage battle possible would have brought down one of the two. Using my clippers, I cut out the ragged lines of where the Star Drake's stomach had been ripped open. I then deepened the damage with my knife. I mixed up some Procreate and pushed it into the recess of the Star Drake's body. I then took this rib section from the Terrorgeist kit and pushed it in, so that it looked like he had been cut all the way down to the bone. I rolled out these little wormy dealies of Procreate, which I planned on putting between these two texture plates. They're designed to create cables, but I thought could work as intestines. I placed them in the gut portion of the Star Drake and then carefully looped them to look like they were falling out. This worked good, but not great, so I later went in and replaced them with wormy dealies without the striations on them, and then also looped them so they looked like they were falling out in a grosser manner. I rolled out a ribbon of green stuff and layered it over the skin above the exposed ribs. I sculpted on a continuation of his scales and then lifted up the ends a little bit so that it looked like the skin was peeling away. Bodies are made up of layers of different skin and fat and muscle and bone, so beneath that, but still above the ribs, I sculpted in more green stuff to look like it was a layer of fat or something. I did the same to the other side, creating an explanation of just how the Star Trek had been brought down. Okay, back to the Maw Crusher. I started by snipping off this blade from his forearm and replacing it with this Stormcast shield, one that's been doubled in size. The big inspiration I had for how I wanted my Maw Crusher's forearms to look is this Maw Crusher conversion I found online from Phil Kelly on Twitter. I really liked the cluttered, strapped on look of them, and I wanted to recreate that, but with Stormcast armor. This was the result of my first attempt. It looks okay, but there's something weird about its silhouette, like it's a little too broad, I think. My second attempt worked much better. The breakthrough was using the chest plates from the Drakoth kit as knuckle dusters. One of the odd things about the Mega Crusher is that it doesn't actually have claws. The ends of its fingers turn into the wings that you see there, so the way it fights, I guess, is just by bashing its enemies with its fists, which honestly is very Iron Jawsy, so I approve. Another part of that conversion I really like is the arc that he tied to the tail. Unfortunately, I don't really have it. It's a chaos piece, even though it looks a touch Stormcasty there. So instead, I use this big Stormcast head to put over the bludgeon that's originally tied there. Once I did though, I looked at it and I realized it looks kind of a lot like Rick's face from Rick and Morty, which led to this deeply hilarious Instagram post. By the way, follow me on Instagram, link in description. Using my clippers, I cut off the spikes that come out of my Maw Crusher's spine. I then layered on a line of Stormcast pauldrons to cover the gap. It's a small touch, but one that I really like. It kind of gives the impression that he's taken one from every Stormcast he's killed, a line of trophies. I'm not very good at sculpting, but I tried my hand at a few gashes at his shoulder. I really wanted to sell the impression that the fight with the Star Drake had been a clash of titans, that though victorious, the Maw Crusher hadn't gotten out of there unscathed. High off my success, I decided to try for a trio of slashes on his cheek. I used the same method I had for the shoulder, essentially just flattening a roll of green stuff over his skin, marking it the same way with the same scales, and then slowly peeling it apart in the center. This looked okay, but not great. They pretty clearly just looked like decals that I had stuck onto his face. I eventually took them off, but before that, used some green stuff to make it look like blood was dripping from his maw. I like to think that he's actively eating the Star Drake. No respect for his fallen opponent. So far, I had kept separate the three major elements of him, the Star Drake, his body, and his forearms, but now it was time to combine all three, and that was a pain. As you can see here, I originally connected one forearm to the Star Drake. I did this primarily because where the knuckles rest, it was going to be a lot more visible than the elbows of the Maw Crusher, which are going to be pretty much hidden by his wings. I didn't mention this, but I also cut off the back of his wings so that they're a little smaller than they are in the original kit. I'm going to spare you all the trouble it was trying to get everything to fit together, uh, because believe me, it was a pain. The Maw Crusher has really odd proportions with essentially no upper arm, and getting the hands to rest on the Star Drake while also having him look good and like he was standing up was a lot of trial and error. One reoccurring problem was that where his right fist rests to make sure his stance looks good needs to actually be into like a caved in portion of the Star Drake's chest which doesn't super make sense. The Star Drake's body wouldn't deform that much just from pressure. Eventually, my solution was just to hide the indent with his breastplate to make it look like it had deformed inward. Not great, but not terrible either. 
As a final touch, I added some more Iron Jaws blades and greebles over the Stormcast armor. I also added magnets so that he could deconnect and reconnect to the Star Drake. And with that, my lizardy Godzilla was finally done. You may notice that he doesn't have a mega boss riding him, and that's because when I added one, it took away from the center of attention in the scene and really cluttered the whole silhouette. I'm happy with that one on there though, and I'm super proud of how he turned out. There's a real sense of triumphant savagery about him, and I think he makes sense as the pinnacle of my Stormcast armored Iron Jaws. And what's funny is that while this may seem like it was a really expensive build, I actually made it for less than the original Maw Crusher kit. Both bodies I bought separately from their riders, and both when they were on sale, for a combined 83 euro. I don't know how many dollars that is because I can't do math, but it's a lot less than the original Maw Crusher's 130. The Stormcast bits I also just had lying around, so those don't really cost anything. But what do you think? How do you think he finally turned out? Let me know in the comments. And if you're interested, check out some of my other conversions. Thanks for watching.